Once companies record receivables, the next question is how should they report them in the financial statements? This video will discuss how we value accounts receivable. Companies report accounts receivable on the balance sheet as an asset at the net realizable value. This represents the amount the company expects to collect in cash. Determining the amount to report is sometimes difficult because some receivables will become uncollectible. Accounts receivable is made up of individual customer accounts. The accounts receivable amount on the balance sheet represents the total of these individual customer accounts. When a business extends credit to its customers, it knows that some of these customers will pay them, but unfortunately, some will not. A business may not learn which customers will not pay until the next accounting period. At the end of the period, a company typically does not know which accounts receivable will become uncollectible. If they did, they wouldn't have extended credit to those customers. Although customers must satisfy the credit requirements of the seller before the credit sale is approved, some accounts become uncollectible. The seller records these losses that result from extending credit as bad debt expense. This is a normal and necessary risk of doing business on a credit basis. Two methods are used in accounting for uncollectible accounts. The first is the direct write-off method, and the second method is the allowance method. Under the direct write-off method, when a company determines an account to be uncollectible, it charges the loss to bad debt expense. Bad debt expense will show only actual losses from uncollectibles. Under this method, companies often record bad debt expense in a period different from when they recorded the revenue, so no attempt is made to match bad debt expense to the credit sale. The company reports accounts receivable at its gross amount. Unless a company expects bad debt losses to be insignificant or immaterial, the direct write-off method is not acceptable for financial reporting purposes. Let's assume that Warden Company writes off M.E. Doran's $200 balance as uncollectible on December 12th. The journal entry would result in a debit to bad debt expense and a credit to accounts receivable, but more specifically M.E. Doran. The amount is for $200. Using this method, entries to record write-offs are often made in a period following the credit sale rather than in the period in which the sales were made. This credit sale most likely occurred several months ago. As a result, this method does not follow the matching principle. In addition, receivables are not reported at the amount the company expects to collect. As a result, this method is not acceptable for financial reporting purposes unless bad debt losses are insignificant or immaterial. The allowance method of accounting for bad debts involves estimating uncollectible accounts at the end of each period. It is based on the matching principle, so we record bad debt expense in the same period as the credit sale. This method also ensures that receivables are stated at their net realizable value, which is the amount a company expects to receive in cash. It excludes amounts that the company estimates it will not collect. Companies must use the allowance method for financial reporting purposes when bad debts are material or significant. There are two primary steps in the allowance method. First, companies estimate uncollectible accounts using an adjusting entry at the end of the period, which debits or increases bad debt expenses and credits or increases allowance for doubtful accounts, which is a contra asset account. 
The business does not wait to see which customers will not pay, but rather it records a bad debt expense based on estimates that were developed from past experience. It uses the allowance for doubtful accounts to house the pool of unknown bad debts. When a company determines an account to be uncollectible, it debits allowance for doubtful accounts and credits accounts receivable. To illustrate the allowance method, let's assume that this furniture company has credit sales of $1.2 million, of which $200,000 remain uncollected at the end of the year. The credit manager estimates that 12,000 of these sales will prove uncollectible. The adjusting entry will increase or debit bad debt expense and increase or credit allowance for doubtful accounts in the amount of $12,000. Allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra account to accounts receivable. The difference between these two accounts is the net realizable value or net receivables. This is the amount of cash the business expects to collect. It excludes amounts that the company estimates it will not collect. Various methods are used to collect past due accounts. When a company exhausts all means of collecting a past due account and collection appears unlikely, the company writes off the account. When an account receivable is written off as uncollectible, the customer still owes the money, but the company stops pursuing collection. Some companies turn these receivables over to a collection agency to recover some of the cash for the company. To illustrate, assume that the vice president of finance of this company authorizes a write-off in the amount of $500 for the balance owed by RA Ware. The entry to record the write-off is a debit to allowance for doubtful accounts in the amount of $500 and a credit to accounts receivable RA Ware for the same amount. The company does not increase bad debt expense when the write-off occurs because the company has already recognized the expense when it made the adjusting entry for estimating bad debts. The entry to record the write-off of an uncollectible account reduces both accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful accounts. A write-off affects only balance sheet accounts. Net realizable value remains the same before and after the write-off. Occasionally, a company collects from a customer after it has written off the account as uncollectible. The company makes two entries to record the recovery of a bad debt. The first entry reverses the entry made in writing off the account and reinstates the customer's account. The second entry records the collection of the receivable as well as cash. To illustrate, assume that on July 1st, R.A. Ware pays the $500 that Hampson Company had written off on March 1st. Hampson makes the following entries. First, they will debit accounts receivable R.A. Ware and credit allowance for doubtful accounts in the amount of $500. This entry reverses the entry made in writing off the account and reinstates the customer's account. The next entry will record the collection of the receivable. It will result in a debit to cash and a credit to accounts receivable RA Ware in the amount of $500. Note, the recovery of a bad debt, like the write-off of a bad debt, affects only balance sheet accounts. This is a great exercise that summarizes all of the concepts we've talked about so far. The solutions to this learning exercise will be provided in another document.